The X-59 is a marvel of engineering and uh, a great technical achievement. The motivation for the project to restore commercial supersonic flight has got to be one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. So this breakthrough really redefines the feasibility of commercial supersonic travel over land. It brings us closer to a future that we can all understand, cutting flight time from New York to Los Angeles in half. You might think, well, what's wrong with getting between point A and point B at half the time? Well, the price tag for all that extra speed and time savings is three times the fuel use. And that's a little bit of a problem in a world where aviation is a major contributor to human CO2 emissions because we are not meeting any carbon emission uh, targets uh, towards net zero and the like. Just before COP28, Channel 4 News and the Center for Climate Reporting revealed the Saudi plan to aggressively pursue the expansion of fossil fuel use. This included an aggressive promotion of internal combustion engines in Asia and Africa, along with the deployment of heavy fuel oil mini power stations. The third leg of this grand scheme of theirs is the expansion of supersonic flight for its singular virtue of consuming three times the aviation fuel. On top of all that, the Saudis are now planning a global rollout of supersonic aviation, stressing the fact that it uses a lot more fuel. The Saudi's presentation helpfully explains supersonic flight uses three times as much jet fuel. This, it seems, is desirable. The Saudis plan to fast-track development of commercial supersonic aviation. I wanted to bundle one more thought with this package of information, and that is to voice my displeasure at the idea that NASA was um, made to do a project not for the pursuit of the general improvement and advancement of aerospace or, say, even national military interests, but as a subsidy to the economic interests of a foreign power, that is Saudi Arabia, because it wouldn't take – I think it would not be a stretch of the imagination to think that Aerospace engineers in the U.S. caught on to the Saudi interest to revive supersonic flight and um, <clears throat> worked the nerves and probably the taste buds of a few of their representatives to um, inspire this project um, to come into existence. Now, I have to imagine that's how a good chunk of the world economy works. I don't have to like it, but um, I think that it's very likely that the reason why um, research into supersonic flight has been revived is um, um, subsidizing Saudi Arabia's um, expansion of their oil revenue. I'm sure eagle-eared economists out there would say that this is a virtuous circle. America spends a lot of money on Middle East oil. So if that money is returned to us, to Lockheed Martin, it's all good. And I think that point, is, and I don't see any reason to argue the point, um, the money would come back into the U.S., it would be spent within the U.S., yada, yada, yada. All good. But I would also point out that this is a clear demonstration of the failure of the marketplace. Resources allocated to the development of supersonic flight isn't being used on projects that could better the lives of hundreds of millions, if not billions of people all over the developing world. Basically, 
Asia and Africa, and really even the developed world, um, we wouldn't be spending money like that um, on projects that would allow us to have a comfortable, prosperous life with a smaller carbon footprint. The Saudis are not doing that. They're focusing their money and influence, doing the opposite. And that is a very clear and present market failure.